Hello, everyone. On behalf of, my name is Michael Brooks, Vice Chairman of the Sullivan County Legislature. And on behalf of our Chairman, Robert Doherty, and the rest of the Sullivan County Legislature, welcome for joining us today on our Town Hall. With us today is our County Manager, Joshua Potosik, our Director of Public Health, Nancy McGraw, and our guest is Phil Vallone, the owner of Rowing V Bus Company. We're going to start today with Phil. He's got a few comments uh, about uh, what he's been going through in his company in these times uh, of COVID-19. So Phil, welcome for joining us today. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for tuning in today. So um, we've been fortunate to keep uh, our workforce engaged through the shutdown. Um, we've created an online training uh, program to keep them engaged. Our compliance teams are working. Our maintenance shops have been open right through, catching up on some uh, maintenance and doing projects around the, around the yards. Um, the districts that have been paying us, uh, those drivers have been kept on payroll. Most others have been covered through the PPP we were fortunate to get. Uh, we're also um, happy to be participating in a couple of uh, meal delivery programs in some districts. And uh, every week I get my employees uh, on the phone, uh, weekly conference calls on Fridays, keep them updated what's happening with the business and the communities. And that seems to be very uh, much appreciated by the staff. Again, all in the uh, light of keeping them engaged and all eyes on September and uh, return to work when we'll be ready to go. Thank you, Phil. And we certainly hope that as time passes and we get towards September that uh, there'll be some clarity and because for folks like Phil in busing, um, there's, a, there's a lot up in the air and, and it's very difficult. I mean, it's difficult for everyone, but uh, imagine the, uh, the owner of a, of a bus company. And, uh, you know, we, th we thank Phil for, he's been in the area for a long time and has provided excellent service. I know I dealt with Phil uh, when I was on the school board. And, uh, but as we all know that we're all dealing with this in our own way, but for business owners, it's, it's, um, it is very difficult. So, um, so now our question and answer. We're going to start with Nancy, as we usually do. And the question, what are the latest figures, confirmed cases, people currently hospitalized, people currently recovered, people who have died, and how many tested? Nancy, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are still uh, looking good. We have had no new cases uh, over the weekend and we are actively monitoring only 10 people at this time. There are currently no hospitalizations. Uh, that is a decrease from last week. And um, we have one additional death, unfortunately, that we uh, found out about recently. Um, we have 1,417 individuals so far to date who tested positive. Um, 151 people in mandatory quarantine and 13,101 people have been tested for COVID-19 uh, from Sullivan County uh, so far to date. Uh, I do wanna mention that we are um, proceeding through reopening and it's very important that everyone uh, wear their masks and um, social distance in the public. Um, it's very important to prevent transmission of the virus and we wanna continue to see uh, very low number of cases. Thank you, Nancy. Our next question is for Josh. How does a resident report a local business that is open and non-compliant with the requirements for masks and social distancing? Will there be any enforcement of the requirements? Josh, welcome. Welcome. Thanks, Mike, and good afternoon. Um, as we've discussed several times before, um, the, the first avenue to uh, report any kind of uh, suspected violation of social distancing or not wearing masks would be the New York Pause hotline. Um, we receive those um, vetted uh, complaints or, or reportings to our EOC that then gets distributed to various law enforcement or town officials depending on the nature of the complaint. Um, generally, uh, education seems to be working in 99% of the cases. If we have a complaint and law enforcement or town officials are at a scene, um, we educate them on if we are seeing something that's not in compliance with a state order. And 99% of the time, those uh, businesses or individuals come into compliance. So I think education has been the, the biggest tool we've, we've used in, in those cases. Thanks, Josh. 
Next question is for Josh as well. The dashboard indicates our health-related numbers are getting better. What about our economy? Yeah, so as a county governor, our, our biggest indicator on the state of the economy would obviously be our sales tax receipts. Uh, unfortunately, looking today, they're, they're a little bit uh, depressed uh, in the neighborhood of 30%. Uh, but they're on a lag, so they're not indicative of what's happening on the ground today. They, they can be anywhere from a month to a quarter behind, um, depending on the type of business uh, filing their sales tax receipts. We are anecdotally hearing that things such as real estate in certain areas of the county have really taken off with real estate agents have never been busier. Um, and I think people that have had jobs have been uh, pent up and that there's a lot of uh, potential demand for those people that have been employed, saving money, not being able to spend money in a lot of their normal areas. But equally as important as the, the, those that are unemployed without jobs and seeing hopefully that there'll be an extension of some sort of federal stimulus, enhanced stimulus, even if it's not the $600, I think that's been important to help buoy the economy um, while, while a lot of our businesses have been shut down. So hopefully as we start to reopen and those people get employed, um, that, that federal unemployment will help bridge that gap uh, through, until such time that they are employed. Thanks, Josh. Also, another question for Josh, and it reads, when will county offices accept walk-ins without an appointment, including DMV? Yeah, so for most offices outside of DMV, we intend to uh, reopen those offices at the start of phase four. So assuming all of our metrics stay um, in, the, in the, the, heading the right direction in phase four as a region, um, those offices should be opening next Tuesday, I believe July 7th. Um, DMV has been um, dictated a little bit outside of all the other offices. They're kind of governed uh, by the state DMV and executive orders. Um, I would expect they'll probably remain on appointment only. I mean, maybe more frequent appointments, more scheduled appointments, but just to keep density down in the DMV offices, I would expect that an, an appointment system may be looking a little bit different than what we have today, but will be in place for at least a few more weeks until we can kind of get a handle on um, being able to handle more people just on a at-will basis in that office. But regular offices next uh, Tuesday, July 7th, um, we still would recommend that you call um, to make sure we can service your transaction or what information you're needing, but we will start to look to have more um, free-flowing access to the building next Tuesday. Thanks, Josh. Next question uh, I will be asking, how will you hold legislative committee meetings in such a small committee room? Well, we will not be. Will they be live streamed for those of us who don't want to come in person? Yes, they will. Um, we're going to hold our committee meetings in the hearing room uh, where we have our full board meeting. Uh, there will be a 25 person limit to the public and you're invited to come here, but it's first come first serve. Um, and hopefully for those who cannot come here, you can uh, watch uh, the committee um, go through their business. Uh, it's the public's business and get a chance to watch each of our committees in action and see how your government works for you. And we take it very seriously. We are uh, your representatives. We listen to you during the campaigns. We all run them. And we're here to, uh, to take on the business that we talked to you about last year that we would do if given the opportunity by the voters to hold these seats. We have two questions for Phil. First question. How is the transportation bus, how is the transportation business affected by COVID? Well, uh, we're doing better than most, uh, primarily because of our diversification and uh, several of our school districts uh, keeping us contractually uh, paid through the shutdown. Uh, so that's been a big help. Uh, the summer is pretty much a washout. We have some work, but all eyes are really on September. Um, and we're hoping for a uh, prompt startup. But I have to say, um, on behalf of my school districts, all, our eyes are, all eyes are on Albany, and it's a travesty that they have not provided the guidance that these school districts need regarding funding, logistics, and guidance. Our neighboring states have all done that, and on behalf of uh, my school districts, our school districts, every one of us, uh, we implore Albany and the New York State political leaders to do something to provide these schools with some guidance. Um, they're starving for it. Uh, the communities need it. These kids need to get back to school uh, on a lot of levels. Um, and so we just hope that uh, 
uh, Albany provide some guidance pretty soon. But uh, Roland Beale survived this okay. Um, I have colleagues uh, every week, I have another one that's going down that's not going to be able to answer the bell in September uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, but uh, we'll be fine and we look forward to uh, a September startup. Okay, next question, Bill. Is Move Sullivan still running? When will it begin charging passengers? happy to say that Move Sullivan is still running. Uh, ridership is down a little bit, but I have to tell you, uh, the people that are using it need it. It's a lifeline for them, so that's been great. Um, and as far as the fare system goes, uh, we're, we're um, obtaining the fare boxes, and uh, we'll wait for direction from the county uh, when it actually starts. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to Nancy. Nancy has got a few things she would like to talk about, and so I'll throw it over to Nancy. Nancy? Thank you. Uh, just a couple of updates and uh, informational pieces for some of the uh, public health services that we provide as we reopen. I wanted to take this opportunity to let people know that um, early intervention uh, services to in-home um, uh, services to children with developmental, developmental delays uh, will resume um, as of next week, I believe, and service providers should have gotten an email. Uh, if at all possible, um, telehealth will continue and be the preferred method, and we want to make sure that all providers um, abide by all the safety and, and health plans that they've developed for wearing masks whenever services are provided in the home um, and at other locations. We are setting up a conference call with all service providers and if you did not get that notification, please contact our office at 292-5910 um, and ask for the early intervention program. Our WIC program in all locations will continue to conduct phone, uh, appointments by phone only through July 31st. Uh, the State Health Department has given an extension for that. So please continue to call. Um, and farmer's market checks will be issued um, and they can be picked up outside our office by calling and making an appointment. And finally, uh, we're starting to plan for, uh, again, for our rabies clinics. Um, we will be doing rabies clinics very differently going forward um, as we um, start to do things differently with um, safety plans and, and um, how we have in the past. So appointments will be required uh, and people need to go online through a survey monkey uh, registration process uh, for the first clinic anyway, um, which we posted on our website and we'll continue to promote that. Uh, you need to register your animals and uh, make an appointment ahead of time. People need to um, remain in their cars until their appointment time and then they can come up to the area where we will be um, uh, vaccinating animals. Uh, we'll make the process as quick as we possibly can. Uh, we do want to continue to provide this service. It's very important that um, we keep everyone safe and socially distanced. Our next rabies clinic, actually the first one of the year, will be in uh, the town of Rockland at the Livingston Manor Firehouse, and we will be outside under a tent. Um, it's on July 30th from 4 to 7, and if you don't have the ability to register online, you can call our office and we will register for you. Uh, again, that's 292-5910. Um, for our rabies clinic on July 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And in closing today, I'd just like to take a minute to thank everyone once again for joining us and sending in your questions. And it's been, uh, it's been a few months since we uh, first started this, and we appreciate the, uh, uh, the uh, responsibility and uh, of just sharing the information. And Nancy, our public health director, has been uh, fantastic. She's been with us since the beginning. Same for Joshua Potosik. And some common themes um, that you've heard spoken here before. Uh, I mean, I'm an optimist by nature. And the, actually we were talking before we went on earlier, 
and the we're doing our best to minimize the risk and Sullivan County has been amazing because we've been able to uh, if I would say effectively uh, minimize the risk no one likes to hear people getting sick or passing away uh, but when you look at it in its totality uh, it's been amazing what Sullivan County has been able to do because people are doing the right thing and there's going to be some sort of risk going forward when we go out and start our lives and business owners start running their businesses uh, but continue to do the right thing the business owners will do the right thing and we'll get through this uh, sooner rather than later so with that i'd like to thank everybody once again for joining us have a good afternoon be safe and bye for now